Hello, this is Lolly. This is sort of an upcycle project. Recently, I found this in a thrift store. These are cardstock or really sturdy dividers for a file system. They're all labeled. And I got it for 99 cents. And I thought I would make this into a mini album. And so I'll show you what I'm thinking of doing. I went to my local scrapbook store and this is kind of a weird color so I took these with me when I went to the store because I wanted to find some cardstock that would sort of go along with them. I would love, when I saw these, I thought it would be great if these were actually folders. That would have made my life more easy, but I know they're dividers. So here's what I'm thinking is I would take the first two and glue them on the sides and make that a pocket and that's one page in the album and this is going to be really sturdy and then this one um, would just I would put another piece of paper here as uh, a pocket here and that could be its own page and then the last one would again glue these two together to make those a pocket but either way I need to cover the fronts and backs of all these I'm not going to cover anything on the inside so that's like one two three pages 15 pages this could be really super chunk okay so um, I picked up these papers just by looking around her store and picking things that would kind of go with it. This is the Simple Stories Spring Farmhouse Collection. So most of it is from there, but I also picked up, oh, a couple things that were on clearance. And I know this is not that color, but it matches some of the turquoises in here. So I picked up that. This is really thick. And this is Trendsetter by Fancy Pants. And I thought this is really pretty. And I will show you all of these really quick. So these are little cut-aparts. And some of these I got two of because I think, oh, I love this. Wow. Thinking that this could be the cover, but I'm not sure. This is some doors, yellow stripe. I got two of these. And there's plants and that. These are really beautiful words and this pink on the back and there's another one of that first one I showed you with the cut aparts this is bigger cut aparts and little bicycles I got two of those and then these are just some solids here I said this is such an unusual color that I had a hard time not solids they're polka dots but they kind of match the collection so I'm not sure I have enough looking at this and how many pockets I'm going to need so I'm going to write myself a note here as to how big I want to mat these and these will be just matted so these are eight by without the tab they're five by eight so for a mat I'm going to do let's do seven and three quarters so if I just took a quarter off be four and three quarters by seven and three quarters for all the mats and then for the ones that I'm going to just do a pocket coming out, um, I'll probably make that make that four and a half. Okay, now I'm just going to cut a whole bunch of paper off camera and come back and work on this. Okay, I have, well, I figured out 25 sheets at the four and three quarter by seven three quarters. These are the ones for matting on there because front and back, just the back, and front and back I would need 25 of these and I had just enough cardstock and then what I'm going to do for the pockets on the fronts of these is to do Franken paper from all the scraps that I did from cutting apart these mats so I have all of this that I can do to make a Franken paper for those pockets so okay now next thing I'm going to do off camera is take a little bit just lightly of the black soot and go over all the edges on all of these and all of these and I will do that off camera. So I did all of the really gentle black distressing all the way around. It's just enough to make it pop a little bit. Okay, well I've changed how I'm going to put a cover on here and bind it. I was thinking of doing like the hinge binding system and it would make it so big 
that I think I'm going to have to do the two hole punch system. So let's get some tape and glue. So I cut these up and I lined them up how I want them. So I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do the outline in liquid glue. Oh, I love that already. Okay, now this would be a pocket and so this would be the back side and I already have this cut out. So now that I have those, I'm going to glue them together and I'm going to use liquid glue because tape never dries. And so when you go to put things in these pockets, it will always be sticky. So that is my first pocket. And I didn't need any thumb notches because of the fact that there's these two tabs there. I don't need a thumb notch. It's easy to get items in and out. Oh, that is so cute. So that's the one. Now, the middle one is going to have uh, Franken paper there. So I am going to glue the back piece on here.
those are all done. Woohoo! Now all I need to do is figure out Franken paper for pockets on the other one. So the reason I had wanted pockets before was as a way to um, see, uh, adhere it to my uh, binding, but I'm not doing that now, so I can do whatever I want. You see, I can put Franken paper here. I can just do whatever I want. So I'll piece these together, and some of them go this way. Like I could do that, and I could do another strip, or let's do a solid like this. I think that's what I'll do on this one. So I would need. Let's see, how much is this? I need about two and a quarter inch wide strip of this. But what I did, I actually made it wider. That way I could put this on and then this could be a, a pocket to slide things in. But I didn't do any of um, distressing on these yet. So let's do that. Okay, so we got A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now I need to do a pocket for this one, or at least a mat. Okay, that is pretty fun. Okay, now we need to punch holes and we need to uh, get a cover going for this. But I also have these sheets here, cut aparts, and these that I saved for embellishments. So I'll get those cut out off camera. Okay, I want to show you what I have done. So I made sure that all my pockets were glued shut. And then on every one of these that has a pocket already made, I cut a cardstock out. These are four by six and a half. And I used one of the two inch cut aparts, rounded the corners, and I distressed those and these. And I made sure that the tab was on the opposite side of where these tabs naturally occur. But that way I could get them out of here since I don't have thumb notches. So I have that. So it adds a whole lot more tabs to it. Now I was asked, am I sure that these are vintage uh, dividers? One of the reasons I said that is they are very uniquely sized. And the other reason is that they also, um, there is some, uh, there's some like dinging on the corners and I just haven't seen this unusual color anywhere else. Um, but anyway, 
So just a heads up, this will be in my shop when I am done, and I don't know when I'm going to upload this. So when you look, if you are interested in buying this, there will be a, uh, the very first thing at the top of the video, underneath the video description box, will be a date. I will put a date and a time about when this will actually be put into my shop so that, you know, you can come back and look then. So I have that, and I cut up and distressed the edges on all of the cut aparts like this. Okay, and then in to make covers, I cut the covers because these are about, I wanted my covers five and a half by eight, eight and a half, eight and a quarter by five and a half, I'm sorry. Uh, eight and a quarter by five and a half. This is eight inches wide, so eight and a quarter is just a pinch more. And five and a half is just a pinch more. It's not giving me a whole lot of extra room there. So I cut the chipboard up. I cut the covers at six and three quarters by nine and a half. And I have two of those. So I'm not sure which way I'm going to go. I really like both of these. I think, well, we'll see. So then all I need to do is to center this pretty well in there. It's not imperative. And fix this down on there. Then I'm going to go around just the edges with liquid glue. I don't make an effort to just put liquid glue on top of tape. I have my own reasons for doing for not doing that. Now, it doesn't matter that it's not 100% straight on there because you won't really know from the front. So the first thing I want to do is to get these corners off there and if I cut them right at the edge of the chipboard then when I fold them over you will see bare chipboard. So one of the ways you can get around that is take a piece of the exact same chipboard, put it up against there. This is too curved. Try to get it straight. Put it right up against there and trace because that is the actual width that you need to cut out your corner here. Okay, And then cut those off. I'm going to give that a score and then I'm going to glue that and I'm going to need lots of support here. It takes a while for liquid glue to really hold and I am going to use liquid glue. I'm going to get those trained up. My first swipe of glue is going right down in there in that crease. Then I'm going to outline it Okay, I'm going to fold these under so that that way it can lay more flat here. Okay, now I need to plan which side is going where. So I also cut these little liners that are going to go here and those are five by seven and three quarters. So I need to figure out, this is only what we're using whatever papers I had left. I have to figure out which one goes where. So this is going to be the inside. I don't care for this. So this will be showing. I really, I like them all so much and I do want to utilize this somewhere. So that might be a good alternative. And then I have this on one side and this on the other. Okay. So let me explain why I don't put down double-sided tape and then stick glue all over that. And that's because the tape is meant to hold paper to paper. And I want the glue to hold paper to paper. If I put glue on top of the tape, I'm gluing the tape to the glue and not to the paper, if that makes sense. I want the tape to actually stick to the paper, not a layer of glue. I do use multiple glues, some multiple adhesives sometimes, but I just always make sure they're in their own separate strip. 
Okay, that's one, and I will do the other one off camera. Okay, those are both done, and I need to figure out which one is the actual cover, and I do like this one a lot better. I think it's more engaging, and I'm looking at my scraps and the cut-aparts here, the cut-aparts here, and I think I want to put this one on the cover. I realize I'm going to have holes here, so I might want to punch my holes so I can get a good idea of placement. I said this is eight and a quarter, so I need to be careful that I'm doing that right. Let me do this first. Let me get one of these pages done. Make sure I've got this right. So I said these are eight inches wide. Yep, I have this set to eight. So I'm going to do one of these and then I'm going to switch this to eight and a quarter to make sure this is what I'm thinking here. Yep, that's the placement I want. And the holes help me to know where I'm decorating. So I know you probably can't see that. So I have all these scraps. I don't have that much left over, but I like this and I like these. So, ooh, here we go. I found the long piece. I'm thinking of a little strip this way. So I said this was eight and a quarter. Oh, that is so cute. So we do that. And then we could do a strip this way. How about down? Okay, but let's get those edges distressed because it needs to be consistent with what I've been doing. And is this too wide? I think this is too wide for what I want. I'm going to make this a little more narrow. I cut that to maybe two inches. Another benefit to distressing these is this is white core paper, meaning there's two designs, but basically inside there it's still white, so if you cut it or tear it, you can see that white. And I'm going to use foam to get this up because I want it more pronounced. I think I'm going to repunch that one hole though. There we go. And foam tape. I'm centering this so that I can see the borders on all sides. Okay, so it's got a little bit of dimension, but it's not super thick foam, so it's it's really perfect for what I want. Now I need to punch the rest of these holes. But then I need to switch this over to eight. I mean eight and it was eight and a quarter for the cover, so now I need to switch it back to eight so I can do all of these. Now, if you make your these cards any deeper, any wider than they are, you would have to take them out before punching the holes, and it might be a good idea anyway. That's ready for ring binders, and I'm going to probably have to use a two-inch ring because by the time uh, you put anything in here, you know, it's going to get very full. And I think I like this right there, but I'm going to kind of sort through, make sure there's not something I like better. I don't really care for that one. I like the, the bicycle too. So let's go ahead and put this in as a tuck spot. I'm just going to use up my scraps now. And I'm just gonna make this pretty quick here, just adding one of these to each of the pages.
Okay, such fun. I love it. So what I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to put this in my shop. I'm going to include these little pieces that are left over and even my scraps here. So any scrap that I have that I used in this, I will add into the mix so that you can um, use them yourself. And here's even more cut aparts. You can use them this way or use that paper. So I will put that all in there together. And under the video, I will tell you when it will go up on my shop for sale. Uh, get, I'll show you a picture at the end here, at the end of this video with the rings in it. Thank you for watching, everyone. I just love this impromptu uh, project. I think it was really worth it, and it's been so exciting to put that together.